children, our oldest daughter, my son-in-law, and uh, we pray for them, uh, that uh, the Lord would just uh, have been a blessing having them at the house. Let's all stand together, and Brother Mike, you come and uh, get us started this morning. Let's get our minds upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let's turn to 360. Psalms 100, there's five verses out this morning. I think it's a wonderful answer. So God's Word is rich all the way through, Amen. Yeah, without any question. And there's those scriptures sometimes that just, just, uh, just are special. But Psalms 100, verse number one says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, Amen. all ye land. Psalms 100, verse two, Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Oh, my God. 
Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer today. And uh, let's continue praying for all of the requests that have been made <laughs> mention. And uh, I'm certain somebody's probably got a new request that you'd like to make mention. Anybody? Thank y'all for praying for me and my family and this time of need. It's hard yet to believe that Jim's gone because I know where he is. He's in a better place than we are. Appreciate your prayers all this time. Praise the Lord. Lord, I 
stop praying, reclaim the backslid. Save them that's lost, dear Lord Jesus. I pray that you'd uh, work in our hearts and work in the hearts, Lord, of those round about us. Add them to the church, Father, daily, such as should be saved. Build up your church, dear Lord. Send revival. Lord, God bless in this hour. Have your holy will and way. And Lord, we'll thank you for all that you do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, somebody may have a testimony on your heart this morning. Song on your heart. Something you want to do for the Lord. Or something the Lord has impressed you to do today. Feel free to obey the Lord. Amen. Anybody have anything on your heart? Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Anybody else? Somebody may have a testimony while they're getting ready.
through the air. songs this morning were just amazing. It's amazing how the Lord, how he leads, how he directs. I didn't talk to Brother Mike about any of the songs he picked, but they lined right up with what I've got on my heart. The Lord put this on my heart. I guess it was Thursday night when we got in, and I've been booked down in the book of James for quite some time, really since the first of the year, to preach several messages out of the book of James. But then I kind of, the Lord kind of directed my heart to go to John. I like these smaller, these smaller letters. They're not really small in what they have. They're great in their messages. But in size, they're really small. And most of the time we seem to glance over them and not give them the time that they really deserve in meditation. First John chapter 2 is where we'll be this morning. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 1 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Thank God for that. Amen. And he is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but for also, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his <coughs> commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him all himself also to walk even as he walked. Let's see, let's jump over. Well, I'll just read the whole chapter if you don't mind this morning. You can see, keep your seats. Brethren, it says, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye have from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past, and true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. And I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. 
and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth that Son, the same hath not the Father, but he hath that acknowledged that he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning ye shall, shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that, the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. Amen. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Dad, would you pray for us this morning? Uh, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus again today. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for all the songs that we've heard, for the testimony, for the time of prayer that God has given us today. Dear Lord, I pray now that you would take your servant and use him, give him unction, Lord. May the word of God have free course. Lord, may we be uh, faithful hearers, not forgetful hearers. And dear Lord, help us to apply the word of God to our heart. Lord, may it go forth and accomplish that. We know that it will. And God, that you sent it forth to do. And dear Lord, bless the congregation today through your word. Bless every soul that's here. Lord, if there's one saved, may today be the day that they find Jesus as their Savior. The Lord, we'll thank you and bless you for all that you do today. We do ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, I thought of this chapter, I want to take my text out of verse 28, but I'm going to springboard all around the New Testament this morning. So I'll try to stay with the outline and not run too many rabbits. But then I thought when I thought about this in verse 28, it says, And now little children abide in him. All through this chapter, we see a whole lot of where he says to abide in yeah. things of Christ, in right. Christ, and in things of Christ. But in this verse 28, this is where the Lord really smote my heart and really dealt with me. And he said, Now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. How many times as a kid, how many of you remember one of your parents saying, you ought to be ashamed of yourself? Yeah. All of us. My parents said it to me. Every, every, I think every child who was growing up, or mom and dad, if you were caught doing something bad, they said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. This passage we, we read this morning, this little text. One day this Lord, the Lord is going to return. Our Christ, our Savior, He's coming back. Amen. And there will be a glorious jubilee for us that are saved and in Christ. Amen. But my soul, I don't want to be ashamed that He's coming. Right. I don't want the Lord to come back and find me doing something I ought not be doing. Right. 
for something I should be doing that I'm not doing. Right. It's a, one, one of the greatest truths in our Bibles that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. You know, the world, they're, they're at the point now, they're denying the Lord, they're throwing him out of everything. Right. You know, it's just like that old scripture, you know, since the fathers have slept, time and things have gone on like they did in old times. Right. That, that they're, they're trying to get God out of everything. Where's the promise of his coming? They're, they're throwing it out. But we know that the Lord is his coming is imminent. Yes. And it says for us to oh, abide yeah. in him. And I want to look at, for just a little bit of time, those three words and how not to be ashamed at his coming. And the first word I want to look at is that word, abide. He says, now little children, abide in him. And isn't that interesting where it says, in him. Yeah. Where we abide, that's an active, that is where we are actively living right. in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, Your right. house is where you abide. I don't live in your house. Now I thought when I thought about this, Sister Mary, when we were up here at Christmas time and we were all going around Carolyn, went to Sister Mary's house and we dropped her off and we sang carols to them. But we walked in the house of several different people, and while we were in there, I can't help but notice the pictures on the wall and the things that, that make that house their home. The things that make it where they abide. Now, where I abide is different than where you abide in the physical sense. But where should we abide in the spiritual sense? We should abide in him. Amen. Now, when I walked into Miss Mary's home, I saw pictures. And there were some things. There were some, um, those murals on those, those painted murals on those saw blades. I took pictures of those. I was so impressed by them. Amen. But, you know, in the spiritual sense, the world, we should be abiding in, in Christ so much that the world knows that we're abiding in Christ. Amen. If I were to walk into anybody's home today, I would know what you are actively abiding in by the things that are in your home. Right. Does the world know by the way you live, by the way you act, by the way you talk, where you go? Does it know that you are abiding in Him? You say, why is it so important for us to abide in Him? Our entire life of the, as Christians, as saved, born-again believers, is wrapped up in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. faith is in Christ. In right. Galatians 2.20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. And he says, so we, we are saved through Christ. Romans 12.5 says, so we being many are one body in Christ. Amen. And our wisdom is in Christ. For we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Amen. The saved that have gone on before, what are they called? They're called asleep in Christ. Those that sleep in Christ. And the, our hope is in Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19, it says, In this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. Right. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, and by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We have a new birth in a, in a new life in Christ. Amen. Our victory is in Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which caused the us all to triumph in Christ. It says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Amen. You know, there's no condemnation in Christ. Amen. Romans 8, verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, Amen. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The Spirit of life is in Christ. Romans 8, verse 2, the very next verse. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The love of God is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans 8 Amen. verse 37 39 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor, principali nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, wow. nor height, nor depth, 
nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Father is able to love us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus is that intercessor for us. He's the one that made, he said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. He is the way, the truth, and the life this morning. Amen. We are reconciled to God through Christ. All things are of God. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 and 19 says, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. But the other part of that phrase that's Bible understanding what Christianity is all about is us abiding in Him. All of these, all of these uh, things that describe the Christian life, they all come from abiding in Christ. How does the child of God abide in Christ? Well, Galatians 5.1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Right. Wow. We should not be entangled with the old things. Right. Whether that be traditions, whether that be sins, whatever it is that's entangling us, we ought to stand fast in the liberty that Christ had given us and he has made us free. Amen. In Galatians 5, 7, what's holding you back from where God wants you to be? Galatians 5, verse 7 through 9 says, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. But in verse 9 he says this, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Yeah. Just those little things, those little foxes that spoil the vine, those little things we let creep in that we, that we, won't, that we wouldn't show nobody else, but it's okay for us to indulge in those things. We begin to entangle ourselves with the yoke of bondage that we had before. You know, Christ said, he said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. Uh -huh. But what did he say? He said, learn of me. We are the law. That goes back to the abiding in Christ. He told us to learn of him. And there's, I know far too little, having been saved since I was eight years old, preaching since I was 15, I still know far, far too little uh, yeah. about the Savior who loves uh -huh. me and who died for me. I still don't know the depth of the love of God like I should. But what's holding you back from where God wants you to be? What's hindering you this morning? Because we have been made free in Christ. But you know, a lot of us, we use that freedom and that liberty and we abuse the grace and forgiveness of God. It says in Galatians 5 verse 13, he says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So many times we use the the grace of God as a liberty to get by. Uh -huh. We use it to get by so we don't have to walk in the spirit, but we can fulfill the lust of the flesh. And Galatians 5, verse 16 through 26 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit. How do we abide with Christ? We walk in the spirit. Amen. It says, And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Uh -huh. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as you have also told as I've also told you in time past. And they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, 
provoking one another, envying one another. You want to know how you, if you're walking, if you're abiding in Christ this morning, you can look at the, you can examine the fruit of your spirit, the fruit of the spirit. Is the Holy Ghost in you? Is he producing a love, a joy, a peace, a long suffering, a gentleness, a goodness, a faith? Is there meekness? Is there temperance? Are these things found in your life this morning? If we abide in Christ, they will be evident and they will be obvious to people that are around us. But if we're walking in the flesh, those things will also, they will be obvious to those that are around us. How do we abide? So how do we abide in Christ? But how do we abide in the Spirit? Well, we stay in the Spirit by prayer and meditation in God's Word. In Psalms 91 verse 1, he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Man, I'd like to live there all the time. But I'm, I'm sad to say that most of the time in Christians' lives today, the reason that good people fall away is because they neglect that secret place. Right. We have an opportunity to meet personally with, the, with our Savior, with God. We have a, 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 he wants, He knows you. He knows everything about you. But He wants you to know about Him. Amen. He wants you to learn of Him. He wants you to talk with him, to commune Amen. with him, to love him, to worship him. And where we do that in our personal life is in the secret place. Yes, sir. And where we do that in our personal life is when we meditate on God's word. Psalms chapter 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. He said his delight in verse 2 of Psalms chapter 1 is in the law of the Lord. What made him like a tree planted by the rivers of water? What made him bring forth fruit? Uh -huh. His delight was in the law of the Lord. Right. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Uh -huh. He abided in the word of God. But not only did he abide in the prayer and in the worship and in the reading, but he's abide. If we are to abide in Christ, we have to abide in his love. John 15, verse 9 and 10 says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Amen. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So what do we do if we want to abide in the love of God? We do what God tells us to do. Right. We Amen. live how God wants us to live. We Amen. live for God. He said we'll keep the commandments. We'll abide in his love. Amen. We have to abide in his love because this generation, this world, does not know what love is. Right. If we look right. for love in the world, right. we'll find sorrow. Right. They don't know how to give good gifts anymore, it seems. You know, it, it used to be that you you would you would you would meet a guy and you would think okay he might be lost but he's a good you know he's a good feller, but you know a lot of the time now we, we use that we use that so we don't have to abide in Christ around them and I'm guilty of that of, of not abiding in His love. The Lord wants me to love everybody, Amen. and if I'm obeying His commandments, I have to be willing to tell people about Christ. Amen. I have to show His love, not only abide in it, but I have to show His love. Because this world doesn't know what love is. Amen. This world has no idea what true love is. But not only do we abide in his love, but we have to abide in his gifts. Now, 1 Corinthians 13, if you read the beginning of that chapter, he's simply talking there about those gifts of the early church and how that they were envying one another's gifts. But he said in verse 13, the last verse of that chapter, I believe, he said, And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. 
these three, but the greatest of these is charity. And what is charity? That is that highest form of love. That is that agape love. But what abideth is faith, hope, and charity. We shouldn't covet all those gifts. The world, the, the, the religions of the world, they covet gifts. They covet signs. You go to these mega churches and these, these big Pentecostal outfits, and what are they doing? They're looking for signs. They're looking for showings. They're looking for something. They're not looking for, they're looking for gifts. They're not looking for faith, hope, and charity. They're looking for something fleshly. They're looking for something physical. They're not abiding in the gifts that the Lord has given us. That faith, hope, and charity. But we also, we need to be abiding in the church. How do we abide in Christ? We must abide in the church. Now, in 1 Timothy 3.15, he calls the church the pillar and the ground of truth. He says, but if I tear it wrong that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground and ground of the truth. If you want the truth, come to church. Amen. Right. Amen. Hebrews 10, 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I know that COVID has messed us up. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you that if COVID is the thing that blows you off the house of God, you've got far, far greater problems. Amen. I've seen so much in the past year, people that have blown out of the house of God, lost everything. I, my, it personally affected my family. I've seen members of my family personally affected by moves they made while not abiding in God, while not abiding in their church. But what this simply means is that we owe our church our presence. Whenever the doors are open, we owe the church our faithfulness. Where did God save most of us? I know it's not all of us, but what did the Lord use to save us? The local church. Where does the Lord, where does he send forth missionaries out of? Where does every major thing, every major function come out of and ordained by? It comes from the local church. Amen. We're not going to we, we're not going to meet with God on the fishing boat yeah. on right. Sunday. We're not going to meet him at NASCAR church. Right. We're not going to meet him. The, and we're not going to we're not going to meet him in the bar room. You're right. But where You're are we right. going to meet him? We're going to meet him here in the house of the Lord in Amen. His house. Amen. This is His place, and He just simply asked us to be faithful yeah. to His house. Yeah. Yeah. David longed to build a house for the Lord. But the Lord told David, he said, you can't because you've been a man of war. Right. But he let his son build the house for him. Amen. It ought to be our goal here to build for the house of the Lord. Amen. To build this place up. Amen. To build our fellow laborers up. Right. We ought not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And I know it's scary sometimes. We try to stay safe and we social distance and we're not shaking hands. But I'm telling you, I hate that word social distance because I don't like being away from the people I love. Amen. I don't like not being able to exhort one another the way the Lord told us to exhort one another. Yeah. But we ought to abide in the church. Don't let things, don't let no matter what it is, great or small, don't let it blow you out of the house of God. Amen. And that conclusion, in concluding to our abiding in Him, in John, in First John, in verse six, we read in our in our text, he, "He that saith he abideth in Him, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked." We say that we're Christians, but do we walk like Christ walked? You know, Romans twelve, verse one and two says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God." And he didn't say that's such a great thing. That if you present your bodies, all that you are, presented to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that's not some great thing, but he said that is the reasonable service. Right. And he said on top of that, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed right. by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know why we get messed up? Why churches get messed up? Why Christians get messed up? Because they don't prove that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Why don't they prove those things? Because their mind has not been transformed, but it has been conformed. It has been conformed to the things of the world. It's not conformed to the thinking of the world. 
Why do we neglect the house of God? Why do we neglect the Bible? Why do we neglect prayer? Why do we neglect each other? It's because we have conformed, our minds have conformed, not our hearts. If we're saved, our hearts belong to God. Amen. But our mind, he gave us free will. And that free will even it carries over after we're saved. We're not robots. But we have to make an effort to be that holy, that living sacrifice. Amen. Every day when I get up, I have to present my body a living sacrifice. Right. And in doing so, I have to die to self and the fleshly right. lust. I have to present myself holy. And I have to present myself acceptable unto God. How are we not going to be ashamed when the Lord comes back? If we are not abiding in Christ. If we are not holy, acceptable unto God. Uh -huh. If we are conformed to this world. If our minds are not renewed and transformed, that we can prove those good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the next word I want to look at is the word of hearing. It says, and now, in verse 28 of our text, it says, and now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear. He didn't say if he shall appear, or perhaps he may appear, but he said when he shall appear, Amen. we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now that's talking about that physical return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that when he comes back this time, the second time he's coming back for us, those that are saved and the dead in Christ, yeah. we're going to rise up. But he's also coming back the sec another time, and that's, I guess we call it the second advent coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes back to this world to execute judgment, the last judgment. But the joyful returning, I want to look at that joyful appearing. In Titus 2, verse 13, it says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. John 14, verse 1 through 3, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again Amen. and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Oftentimes, you and I, we think that when we think everybody around us knows that Jesus is going to come back. But I've got news for you. While this great occurrence that will happen, this great, this is historical event that it will become, when the Lord comes back for us, it'll be a glorious occasion. Right. It'll be wonderful. It'll be marvelous seeing our Savior being called up. Those that we've lost, our, our, lost our, our loved ones that have gone on before, they're going to come out of the grave. The Lord's going to give them a new body, and we're going to rise up and meet Him and be transformed in the air. And we're going to be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And I'm, I'm thankful for that day. I can't wait for it to come. Yeah. But you know, there's a world out there, there's going to be a sorrowful appearing for the lost and undone. In Revelation 1 verse 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with the clouds. Every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Right. Even so, amen. Right. All the kindreds of the earth shall wail. They're going to be ashamed at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they've said for years and years, where is the promise of your crazy Christians? You live like this and you do these things, but your Lord, your God has to come back for you. He hasn't saved you. And things get worse and worse and they carry on as they do. As our fathers have slept, they carry on the same. But he said, they're going to wail. One of these days, our lost loved ones, if they're not saved, they're going to wail. One of these days, your grandma, your mom or dad, your son or daughter, your aunt or uncle, your nieces and nephews, one day if they're lost, they're going to wail. The appearing will be sorrowful for the lost and undone. Those all the way back to those that pierced him on the cross, those unrepentant that even crucified our Savior are going to rise up and they're going to see him and the sea is going to give all forth and they're going to wail. That tribulation period is going to come out and they're going to wail. You know, we just had a prophecy meeting in our church with Brother Ted Alexander and he said in the first he said basically a third of the world's population within the first few months of the tribulation. It's possible that the, the, a third of the world's population will be killed just from the judgments 
that are unleashed in the tribulation. There will be wailing. They're going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to kill them. Right. While there's a glorious day for us that are saved, there's a sorrowful appearing. Right. Now that third word I want to look at is that word of shame. Now we look back at that first word abide, we looked at the second word appear. So I want to look back at our text in that verse 28. It says, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Our appearance before him. We know he's going to make an appearance to us here. Amen. But we're going to make an appearance before him. Right. The Bible says the Lord has an appearance he's going to make. But there's one that means that all men. We, we, after death we are going to stand in the judgment. Right. Wow. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Wow. One of these days, oh we're going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ. In the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to give an account for how we've conducted ourselves, right. how we use the mercy and the grace of God and the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, how we how we live down here. We're going to give an account for it. The Bible says we'll give an account for every idle word. Right. The weight of that, that blows my mind. Uh, yes. But we can look at Corinthians 5 and we'll jump back to verse 9. It says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. We looked at verse 10, for we must appear. We'll read it together. 2 Corinthians 5, 9, through 9 verse 10. It says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We labor. We must labor, therefore, wherefore we know what's coming. We know. So we must labor to present ourselves, whether it says whether present or absent, that we may be accepted of him. How are we laboring that we might be accepted? And I'm not meaning that saved salvation. I'm not talking about work salvation. <clears throat> that when he comes, that he finds us doing what he told us to do. Yeah. And if you and I are saved, and we're, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we are in Christ. Amen. There's no way of getting out of Christ. Right. But the Bible says we are to so labor, whether wow. present or absent, we might be acceptable of him. Are we going to be acceptable of him? Or is he going to be ashamed? Are we going to be ashamed at his coming? Yeah. I want to hear well done. Amen. Y'all, I want to win a crown of life. Yeah. But what will Christ find us involved in when he returns? Yeah. And in closing, we know Christ's return is imminent. Therefore, if we're right with God, we need to be right with God. But we must win souls before it's too late. Amen. Because we all have lost friends and lost family that need to be saved. You know, I have a family member back home. And, uh, cousin Luke. And he's going to all the older members of our family. And he's asking them their testimony. Because they're all up in age. He wants to know their story, their testimony. What their conviction story was. It might be good for us to go to those and, to, and ask, go to our family, just ask them. Has the Lord dealt with you? When did you repent? When were you convicted? When did God save you? When did you trust Christ as your Savior? When did you turn from the old ways? When did you lay down sin and pick up the cross? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 11. Therefore, it says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Be sure you're acceptable before the Lord. Are you saved? No, John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world. He didn't hate us. Right. He didn't condemn us, but we were condemned already. 
that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave Christ to us. That whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, verse 36, He says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. There's our word again, abideth. Uh, abideth on him. And let's all stand. I'm done this morning. Let's all stand, heads bowed, eyes closed. It could be any moment. We don't know the choosing of God the Father's time frame for when Christ will come back. But I'm telling you, 2020 was a year of prophecy fulfillment. Yeah. Things were sped up in God's timeline through the Bible that you can see evident, and they have. It is. It's right there. We're right there, my friend. We are right there. Yeah. Be sure that we are ready. Amen. God's forgive. He'll forgive us. We, he, he said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm glad there's still an advocate with the Father this morning. Amen. No matter what I've done, no matter what you've done, Jesus Christ stands ready and willing with open arms to accept you, to make you acceptable, whether that be salvation, whether there's something in the life of a Christian that you need to get right. And this altar is open, or you can do business with God where you're at. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're humbled at the fact of how great you are, how merciful you are, how wonderful you are to us. Lord, even though we fail you so many times, the Lord, your grace and your mercies, they're new every morning. Lord, we're thankful for that promise that if we will just confess our sins to you, that you'll forgive us. Lord, bring us back into good fellowship with yourself. Lord, I pray this morning, if there's one here, Lord, that's lost, Lord, that you'll reveal their heart, the, the condition of their heart to themselves. Lord, even now, with your Holy Spirit, be knocking on their heart's door, revealing unto them that they're not ready, that they're sinners. They're not acceptable with Christ yet. Lord, we, while we pray for your swift return and we look for your coming, Lord, I pray for those that are still lost. Lord, my family, I've got lost family, lost friends that need to be saved. But Lord, we pray that you would do a work in their hearts even today. Lord, pray for this church. Lord, if there's one here, Christian, may not be where they're supposed to be with you. Would today be the glorious day that they renew, they have that renewing of their mind, or a new transformation, or another cleansing of their heart. Lord, that they might be right with you. Lord, I pray for myself that you would make me ready for the judgment seat. Lord, I pray that you would make me ready and acceptable. Lord, I pray that every day, Lord, we would not get caught up in the lust of the flesh. Lord, I pray that you would help us to walk in the Spirit. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done. We ask you now to continue the work, Lord, that you put into my heart. Would your word go forth in power? Lord, would it change hearts and lives? Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
read a verse of scripture. One day somebody will testify for the last time, thanking God for being saved. Can you do that? Can you thank God for being saved? You know that you're saved. Ready to go. The scripture he read talked about not being ashamed at his coming. There's two ways you can be ashamed. You can be a saved person not living for God. And be ashamed of how you live before the Lord. And you'll go on to heaven. You're saved. You'll go on. But you're going to lose a lot of rewards. You'll have to look at him that died for your sins, died for your life. And then there's the shame of you're left. He's come, took what was his, and you're still here. Bear the shame of being lost, left behind. He knows them that are his. He knows them that are his. Do you know today you're his? Do you know? Well, if you do, you'll be abiding in him. Amen? You'll be abiding in him. Listen, I know where I'm going home today. I know where I live. Nobody has to tell me where I live. I know where I live. And I know where I abide. You'll know where you abide. Do you abide in Him? Is your life hid in Christ? Given to Him? Serving Him? Loving Him? Because of what He all did for you. Amen. You can know today. That's what these invitations are for. Listen. That's what these messages are for. These songs are for. It's all to present the gospel that you could have peace, that the child of God could draw strength to live for the Lord, to go another day. For those that doubt that they could find assurance. For those that don't know that they can know that they've been born again. Do you know today? I'm going to ask her to play one more verse. church for uh, Brother Michael Rogers, Brother Stacy Rogers. He had got right with the Lord, he said, and uh, is waiting upon a letter of recommendation from this church because he had been a member here uh, since 1985. Now, he's, he's not been uh, a faithful member, a regular member, but his name is on 